Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And just a reminder that this series, Dare to Call Him Friend, is based on my book by the same name. You can get that book off of Amazon in Kindle or in paperback form. Or if you truly cannot afford to buy it, I'd love to send you a free copy via PDF that you can open and read on your computer or on your smartphone. But today we're going to talk about steadfastness, what it looks like, what we sometimes romanticize it to look like. I'm going to be using a book I read as a child and then again as an adult as an example and it's called Ryla of Ingleside. It's the very last book in the Anne of Green Gables series written by L. M. Montgomery and to me it's the best in the series. Anne was now reaching middle age life. Her and her husband were still on Prince Edward Island and they were raising their five kids. Their eldest children went overseas to help with the war front, uh, and their youngest stayed home because she was just too young. But this story, what caught my heart with it, the first time when I read it as a child, I couldn't see why there was such desperate e emotions in the book. After all, they were thousands of miles away from the war, and. Uh, the war was only four years old and I knew how it ended, um, so I couldn't figure out why they were so upset. But as an adult, I know the difference. Those who stayed at home were fighting a war of their own. They were battling loneliness, fear, and discouragement, and a myriad of other emotions. In that day, it sometimes took weeks for them to get factual reports of what was really happening over there. There was a lot of hearsay, there was a lot of rumors, and there was a lot of censorship going to protect the troops that were overseas. The Canadian government kept back some of the news. So there was little that these people who stayed home could do, even as they worried for the world and they worried for their loved ones. All they could do was just continue to live their lives the best they could. City folks went to work every day, keeping the economy afloat. Farmers grew crops that would be used for the troops. Mothers and sisters spent hours knitting and sewing sheets together and preparing bandages that would be sent to the front, hoping that these mundane tasks would somehow distract them from the ever-present worry of their loved ones who were on the front lines. As an adult, I have a much better understanding of just what those families went through. Right now, I have several close friends who are going through such struggles right now as loved ones continue to make foolish decision after foolish decision. Some of these young ones are in the midst of serious drug addiction which is causing them bodily harm. And unless the Lord breaks through, these people could actually die, not because of an overdose, but because of the harm these drugs are doing to their system. And they're in the cycle of being in and out of ERs, psych wards, etc., etc. And it looks hopeless. But God understands when we feel hopeless that there will ever be any lasting change. Although he won the final victory and he knows how things end, he doesn't condemn us in times of discouragement. And even when our faith begins to falter, he's there to build us up. He only asks two things of us. One is that we stay steadfast in our knowledge, even if it's a head knowledge at times, that his faithful love endures forever and it never wavers. And second, he asks that we stay steadfast in our belief that he is a good God and his intention is not to do harm. As we stand on those two truths, he'll do everything else. He'll strengthen our faith and he'll increase our trust. I'd like to end with this prayer. So I'm going to be reading it because I want these words to be right. Father God, I pray for those who are battle weary. 
I pray for mothers and fathers who have prayed for their children's salvation for decades. Bless and strengthen them even as they watch their children make foolish decision after foolish decision. Father, be with those who are enduring chronic pain and life-threatening diseases. Be with those who toil in the mission field, whether their mission field is in their house or whether their mission field is thousands of miles away from their loved ones. Give them the strength to endure, to run the race to its completion. Remind them that the final victory has already been won. Give them strength to keep their eyes on the goal set before them. And I'm going to leave you with James chapter 1, verse 2 and 4 and verse 12. But I encourage you to go read the entire chapter. Count it all joy when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Blessed is a man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him.